Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try this problem on your own. Okay, so in this problem, they want us to find the x-intercept for the graph of this equation right here. So first of all, it's important to recognize that what we have is the equation of a line. So we know this is going to be a line. How do we know that? Well, if you look at the value of the exponents on the variables you're dealing with, in this case x and y, what do you see? Well, I don't see any exponent next to x or y in both cases, which implies or allows us to write the exponent as 1 because anything to the first power doesn't change its value. So even though the exponent of 1 isn't there, we can put it there. We can do that for any number, right? You can put an exponent of 1 on it. But the idea is that uh, if you're dealing with an equation and the exponents on the variable, the highest exponent on the variables you're dealing with is 1, um, then you know you're going to have a line or a constant rate of change. And with that in mind, let's graph this line. So every line, um, right, if we graph on the x and y axis, every line we draw, um, you can think of the intercepts and slope in some way. Some lines, like vertical lines, right, like this line right here, well, it's not, let me draw this, sorry. This is a vertical line, let's say, this purple line. Going straight up and down means it's vertical, of course. And let's say that's at 1, 2, 3, 4. At the fourth x value, right, every point on this line, wherever it is, let's this is 4, 1, and 4, 3, or whatever, 4, 3, any point on this line will have 4 as the x value, right, wherever you put it, 4, 1, 4, 3, or whatever. The slope here is undefined, it's vertical. So we just call this line x equals 4, meaning no matter where you're on this line, the x value is 4. In that case, this line has no uh, undefined slope, excuse me, and what's called an x-intercept. An x-intercept is a point where your line crosses the x-axis. There is no y-intercept here, right? In this case, this vertical line has no y-intercept. We could draw a vertical line on the y-axis that intersects the y-axis um, everywhere. That's not what we have. We can also draw a horizontal line, a slope, uh, let's say, this right here. This will have a slope of 0. It's a flat line. And here, any point on this line has the point 4, 3 on it. It also has the point 0, 3, which is the y-intercept, right? The point where this line crosses the y-axis. Any point here has something in common with other points on this line, and that's that the y value of the point is always 3. So 0, 3, 4, 3, any point on this line has 3 for a y value. So we call the equation of this line y is equal to 3. So horizontal line slope is 0, y intercept is 3. Um, vertical line slope is undefined, and uh, it, it'll definitely have an x-intercept. It might have a y-intercept. Horizontal lines, like this pink line right here, have a y-intercept. They won't have x-intercepts unless it's crossing the x-axis. Other than these two special cases, let's go to a different graph now. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's say we have another x and y-axis over here. If, if our line uh, has a slope that's not undefined or zero, it's eventually going to cross both the x and y axis somewhere. Like this line crosses both axes. It has an x-intercept and a y-intercept, right? Um, and any line we draw that has a negative slope, like this line right here, or a positive slope, like this line, um, crosses both y and x-axis, as long as the slope is not zero or undefined. So in this case, if I just sketch this line out, right, it's going to be uh, something like this, let's say. Now let's get into the specifics of this line so we can think about it, and then we'll go and talk about how to quickly solve for this problem. We're very interested, in, because they're asking us, uh, we're, we're very interested in the x-intercept. But again, this line, has, this line has both a y and an x-intercept. So they could ask us for both, and they could also ask for the slope. Um, so we should know all of these things, of course. And so what, what, how can we find the intercepts here? <coughs> Excuse me. So, Remember, the x-intercept always has some number, let's call it a, for an x-value, and then 0 for the height. So we know y is going to equal 0 on the x-intercept, and the reverse is true. We call y-intercepts uh, of the form 0, comma b, which just means that any point as a y-intercept starts with a 0, and then has some number after it called b. So we can find that quickly here in standard form. This is in standard form. Standard form just means you have the form of a line where x and y are on the same side, um, and they're being added or subtracted, 
with a coefficient here, usually a whole number coefficient, um, but you can have fractions as well, I suppose. And uh, they equal some constant value here. It's called standard form. What's nice about it is you can quickly find the intercepts. And all you have to do, really, is to plug in zero into the appropriate spot of the equation. And you'll have either an x-intercept or y-intercept. Here, if we want the x-intercept, we know the y value has to be zero. So plug in zero for y. So we have this. We have 4x minus 5 times 0 equals 40. 5 times 0 is 0. And 4x then equals 40. If we divide both sides by 4 here, 4x divided by 4 is x, and 4 you divided by 4 is 10. So our x-intercept is at 10, comma, 0. So back on that graph, right, our line is rising up here. It crosses the x-intercept here at the point 10, comma, 0. You could just set x equal to 0. 4 times 0 minus 5y equals 40. This one's a little bit trickier. Here, uh, it's 4 times 0, which is 0, and then it, remember, it's minus 5y. Don't lose the subtraction sign. That equals 40. Divide both sides by negative 5, and y equals 1. If we divide both sides by negative 5, y equals ne uh, negative 8. So the y-intercept here is 0, comma, negative 8. Uh, if you don't like this approach, uh, some people are very comfortable with the mx plus b format. Um, so let me just show that real quick. 4 times x minus 5y equals 40. So to, get M, uh, to use the y equals mx plus b format, this means that you're going to rewrite the equation in one of two ways pretty much. mx plus b equals y or y equals mx plus b. And what you're going to do is um, realize once you have it in that arrangement, the number next to x is m, that's your slope, and the constant all by itself is the y-intercept always. So this, some people like this format because you just have to kind of rearrange or manipulate your equation, and then you can quickly read what the intercept and slope are. To do that here, probably what I would do is just add 5y to both sides to get rid of that negative sign. What happens then? Well, we have 4x equals this zeros out 40 plus 5y. Now, to get y equals mx plus b format, we want to isolate y. So get rid of the 40. Subtract 40 from both sides. And that just means that 5y equals 4x minus 40. We're very close to y equals mx plus b format. The only issue is that we have a coefficient next to y other than 1. Because in y equals mx plus b format, it's really a coefficient of 1 on y. So if you have any other coefficient other than 1, just divide by that number. In this case, our coefficient is 5. Coefficients are the numbers being multiplied by the variables. And we get what? Well, 4 divided by 5 is 4 fifths x. Negative 40 divided by 5 is minus 8. And 5y divided by 5 is just y. And this just means um, that our y-intercept, this, this number right here, which we already confirmed, is negative 8. And also tells us our slope, which we didn't find out yet in the other form, right? Notice it doesn't give us the x-intercept. So to use this to find the x-intercept, we still have to do another step. We just have to plug in 0 for y. So you have 4 fifths x minus 8 equals 0. You'd add 8 to both sides, right? 4 fifths of what number equals 8? Well, to solve that, I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 fifths, which is 5 over 4. Because 5 over 4, or 5 times 4 over 4 times 5 is 1. Right? It's 20 over 20. And here we have 40 over 4, which is 10. So here, right, the x-intercept is just 10, right?